Materialists like to think of themselves as taking the rational high ground, as having the strongest logical position. Yet it is surprising how materialists often lack in the most basic clear thinking and logical rigor. In this video, I want to discuss the top 10 most fallacious arguments that materialists use and explain why they are all very, very wrong. All these arguments have been used by materialists in the real world. I haven't invented them. I hope you have fun. Because we cannot change reality by merely wishing it to be different, it is clear that reality is outside consciousness. Well, the fallacy here is to infer that whatever is not within the scope of our conscious volition, of our conscious wishes, is outside consciousness itself. That's a clear fallacy. In fact, our human psyche clearly has vast segments which do not fall under the control of egoic volition, of our conscious wishes. Otherwise, nobody would have a nightmare. Nobody would have psychotic hallucinations. Nobody would even be neurotic. The fact that these things happen show that large segments of our psyches are not under the control of our volition. And in that sense, it's very reasonable to expect that reality itself could be generated by a part of consciousness, a segment of consciousness, that is not under the control of volition. Reality is clearly not inside our heads. Therefore, you were wrong. Well, that's a very nice one, because it completely inverts the argument and, and defeats materialism itself. It is materialism that says that the reality we experience, all the colors, shapes, sounds, flavors, they are all inside our heads, because they are created by our, by our brains, according to materialism. The real reality, still according to materialism, is an abstract realm akin to mathematical equations. What I am saying is that reality is generated by consciousness itself. As such, it is our heads that are in reality not reality in our heads. It is the human body that is in consciousness, not consciousness in the human body. That cannot be because there are strong correlations between brain activity and subjective experience. Clearly, therefore, the brain generates consciousness. Well, the flaw here is to mistake the image of a process for the cause of the process. The body-brain system is the image of a process of consciousness localization, in the same way that a whirlpool is the image of a process of water localization. There is nothing to a whirlpool but water. In the same way, there is not, nothing to the body-brain system but consciousness. The brain does not generate consciousness for exactly the same reason that a whirlpool does not generate water. Yet, of course, the image of a process correlates very well with the inner workings of the process. Flames are the image of combustion seen from the outside. It correlates very well with the microscopic process that we call combustion. The image of the process correlates with it, and that's why brain activity correlates with the first-person view of subjective experience. Because psychoactive drugs change subjective experience, it is clear that the brain generates consciousness. Well, the, the fallacy here is to, to assume a form of dualism implicitly. Um, think of it this way. Is there any problem to say that uh, our thoughts influence our emotions? There's no problem with that, right? After all, thoughts are a process in consciousness and they can influence another process in consciousness, namely emotions. One process in consciousness influences another process, process in consciousness. No problem. Now, if I take a drug in the form of a pill of a, or a liquid, uh, if all reality is in consciousness, then that pill, that liquid, is the image of a process in consciousness. What else could it be? If that pill or that liquid that I ingest interferes with my subjective experience, for instance, my alertness, what I have is a process in consciousness, namely a pill, influencing another process in consciousness, namely my alertness. For the same reason that there's no problem about thoughts influencing emotions, there's no problem about drugs influencing our subjective experience of reality. Because we are separate beings partaking in the same reality, reality has to be outside consciousness. Well, the fallacy here is what philosophers call begging the question. What materialists are doing here 
is assuming materialism in their argument to defend materialism. Um, it is only if you assume materialism that you can say that our psyches, that we are separate beings, because our bodies are clearly separate. But if reality is in consciousness, then our bodies are in consciousness, not consciousness in our bodies. Therefore, the fact that our bodies are separate does not imply that our psyches, our minds, are separate at the deepest levels, at the level of a collective unconscious that may be generating our consensus reality in the same way that our unconscious minds generate our dreams. But in the case of consensus reality, the collective unconscious may be generating a collective dream. The separation between consciousness and unconsciousness is dualist nonsense. Well, there is actually, there is actually some value to this question. The problem is that it misunderstands what the unconscious is. Uh, the unconscious is not a fundamentally different thing from consciousness. The unconscious is actually conscious. It is just an obfuscated part of consciousness. Um, what we call ordinary consciousness is a self-reflective mode of consciousness which amplifies mental contents to an enormous level. That amplification obfuscates everything, everything else going on in mind, in the depths of mind, much in the same way that um, sunlight uh, at noon refracting on the, on the atmosphere uh, obfuscate, uh, obfuscates the stars. The stars are all there on a clear day at noon. They are, their photons are still hitting your retina, but you don't see them because they are obfuscated by the much stronger glare of the sun. Uh, what we call egoic consciousness, our ordinary consciousness, is like the glare of the sun. It's very strong and it obfuscates what we would then refer to as the, quote, unconscious. But the unconscious and consciousness are fundamentally of the same nature. There is no fundamental divide, no fundamental dualism between the two. One does not magically emerge from the other. It's a relative difference, a difference of relative amplification of mental contents. Because reality behaves according to immutable laws, it cannot be generated by consciousness. Well, the fallacy here is to assume that all modes of consciousness are as unpredictable as uh, egoic consciousness, our normal awareness. There is nothing in the idea I'm putting forward that reality is fundamentally a mental phenomenon, a phenomenon in consciousness. There is nothing in it that precludes the possibility that segments of consciousness unfold according to very strict patterns and regularities, which we have come to call the laws of physics. As such, the, our collective unconscious, by generating reality, does that according to these very strict patterns and regularities. Then, to say that a collective unconscious generates reality is equivalent to saying that reality is outside consciousness. Um, no, it is not equivalent at all. Uh, even if the collective unconscious generates reality in the same way that it generates dreams, but in the case of consensus reality, it generates it according to very strict, stable patterns and regularities, which we call the laws of physics, even in that case, there is a profound difference in these worldviews. According to materialism, consciousness is created by particular arrangements of matter in the brain. So when you die and your brain dissolves, your consciousness will disappear. But if the brain is in consciousness, as opposed to consciousness in the brain, and if the brain is merely the image of a process of consciousness localization, then physical death means that consciousness is delocalizing, is declenching, broadening in scope, and physical death does not imply the end of consciousness. This idea of consciousness generating reality is too metaphysical. Oh, I love this one, because it's completely ridiculous. It is materialism that entails an incredible metaphysics. It is materialism that states that the real reality, the reality outside your head, has no shape, color, smell, taste. That shape, color, smell and taste are all generated by your brain inside your skull. And that the real reality is a completely abstract realm, akin to sets of mathematical equations. 
which has none of the qualities of experience, that is profoundly metaphysical, unknowable and unprovable. Even spiritual realms are less metaphysical than that, because spiritual people hope to one day be able to experience those realms, maybe after death. But the real world of materialism, by definition, can never even be known because knowledge exists only in consciousness and the reality of materialists is supposedly outside consciousness. If anything, the notion that reality is a phenomenon of consciousness is anti-metaphysical. It is that notion that states that reality is exactly what it seems, that reality is outside your head, the reality that you experience is outside your head, not inside your head, that colors, smells, tastes, forms, they are all real and not reproductions generated by your brain. This is what this, this notion I'm putting forward entails. It entails that reality is what it seems. It is not metaphysical. It is concrete, because concreteness is a quality of experience, not of abstractions. Why would consciousness deceive us by simulating a materialist world? Now, this is the ultimate in prejudice and blindness. It reveals an incredible inability to see past one's own assumptions. Consciousness is not simulating a materialist world. Consciousness is simply doing what it does, and what it does happens to be the universe. That consciousness generates the universe requires no more complexity, no extra assumption, than the idea that the laws of physics, also irreducible, generate the universe. In the same way that the laws of physics supposedly generate the universe because of their own nature, because of what they intrinsically are in an irreducible manner, consciousness generates the universe because of its own nature, unfolding according to stable patterns and regularities. So in summary, Materialism requires many more postulates, many more assumptions than the idea that it is consciousness that is creating reality as a fundamentally subjective phenomenon. The arguments materialists use to, to defend their thesis can all be defeated one by one with just clear thinking and simple logic. Uh, we do not require the assumptions of materialism to make sense of the world. Everything can be explained, including the correlations between brain activity and subjective experience, the impact that psychoactive drugs have on subjective experience, the fact that we share the same reality, the fact that the laws of physics are so stable and immutable. All of this can be made sense of with many less assumptions, much less complexity, and in a way that does justice to our immediate experience of reality, in a way that does justice to our intuitions about reality. What I'm putting forward entails that reality is exactly what it seems to be, a phenomenon with the qualities of experience, not a reproduction inside your head. It so happens that it also has the inescapable consequence that your consciousness will never disappear, that your physical death will entail a declenching, a delocalization of consciousness. And for some reason, that is not very palatable to materialists. I think materialism has survived for so long, for the past, I don't know, three, four hundred years, despite the fact that it is so wrong, because it, it, it immerses you in a network of hidden assumptions and hidden prejudices that makes one unable to see past that, that tiny box, to see past that set of uh, uh, temporary and flawed conclusions. And, and have a broader view at reality. Usually materialists, uh, when they hear me explain these things, they project a lot more complexity onto what I am saying than what I actually mean. What I'm saying is extremely simple. I'm not talking about religious stuff. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, New Age stuff. I'm talking about a very simple, surprisingly simple interpretation of reality that requires less assumptions, is more parsimonious, and there does more, more justice to our intuitions.